Welcome back. A lot of people are spending yet another night waiting for a life-saving or organ transplant. More than 121,000 Americans are on the list. More than 5,000 here in Florida. TV 20's Chris Gilmore reports donating organs is a choice that can change lives. Yes, we suffered our greatest loss. However, we're okay. Nearly two years ago, Tracy Hesley had one of the hardest days of her life when she had to say goodbye to her 14-year-old daughter, Raven Summerfield, after a four-wheeling accident. So she was in went some friend's house, and um, about 6.30, the phone call came in that she was being lifelighted, that she had been in an accident. After arriving at UF Health for a traumatic brain injury, Hesley says she did what any tough teenager would do. She fought hard, doctors did too, for 36 hours. And on April 21st, the doctors came to us and said there was just really nothing more they could do for her. When losing a loved one, some families find closure in being able to save lives through organ donation. Luckily, that decision was made easier for Tracy because Raven already made the decision to donate life at the age of 10. She said, Ma, that, that's what I want to do. You know, if anything ever happens to me, Mom, I want to be an organ donor. LifeQuest Public Education Coordinator Maria Copeland has made it her life's work to go out and help people understand the importance of making a donation like Ravens. As part of her job, she reaches out to the community to inform people of their options. Scott Pritchett has been teaching driver's ed for five years at Buholtz High School, and he makes sure to bring Copeland every year to teach his students a life lesson. To be unselfish, there's, a, there's more to this life than them. Anytime you can help somebody else out, that's a great just cause, you know. So. Copeland tells students the easiest way to have an impact is to sign up to be a donor. There's different ways to sign up to be an organ donor. You can fill out a paper form, you can sign up at your DMV, or the fastest way is just signing up online. In doing so, you have the chance to give someone a second shot at life. It's a scary process when you're placed on that waiting list because you don't know if you're going to get um, be fortunate enough to be one of the, the people that get a transplant. Respiratory therapist Don Vermillion was one of those lucky people. Seven years ago, he received an unexpected diagnosis. Pulmonary fibrosis, and there really is no prognosis. You know, you pretty much um, you uh, plan ahead and you know fill out your will because you're not going to live much longer. Usually, a year to two years. During that time, Vermillion had one of the most difficult conversations he can remember with his family. You know, I just wanted to let him know, you know. Uh, I wasn't going to be here much longer and kind of the things I kind of wanted done, you know, at my funeral, so. The only thing that could possibly save him was a double lung transplant, a risky decision according to doctors. Explain to them that it's a, there's a very high chance that things may go wrong. So it's a very uh, tricky decision because once we go down this route, there's always the possibility of things not going the way we want it. Recipients and donor organs are typically matched by blood type and size. The wait for a perfect match can take a while. After a nine-month wait on the list, Vermillion got a life-changing phone call. A donor, not unlike Raven, made the decision to turn loss into life. Oh, it's a great feeling. It's, it's still scary, even though you're dying. It's still kind of a scary thing. After his surgery and months of recovery, he was finally able to breathe on his own. Families like Raven say knowing that their decision helped save lives helps the healing process. Her organs went on to save the lives of four people. Her final, her eighth grade yearbook quote actually said, love life, breathe air, and live life to the fullest. Did she do that? Absolutely. Absolutely. And when the time comes, the legacy you choose to leave is in your hands. Chris Gilmore, TV20 News. Last year, nearly 1,500 transplants were performed in Florida.